Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be going through 13 photo manipulation tips for beginners in Photoshop. You can download the project files from the video description if you'd like to follow along. But anyway, let's hop into Photoshop and get started. Rightio, first let's open up some images and you can download these from the video description. The first one is a desert. There we go. And the second one is a fidget spinner. Okay, so we've got our two objects. Now let's take a look at our first tip, which is cutting out objects. So first I'm gonna select the pen tool and make sure it's set to path. Click on the edge of the fidget spinner and then click and drag to draw a curve. And you can also hold alt or option and click on a point to stop it from continuing the curve. And ultimately the goal here is to pen tool the entire outside edge of the object. So let's just speed through this nice and quick. Da, 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 da. And now we can move on to adding additional paths. So first let's switch to the paths panel and then select either the pen tool or one of the basic shape tools. Again, make sure you're set to draw a path, not a shape. Now be careful when you draw your first shape like this, it can remove your work path, which annoyingly is everything we've just done. So let's undo that and make sure that we explicitly select that work path. Now, if we add a new path in that top space, you can see this time it's added to the work path rather than replaced it. So just something to be aware of. And then you can go ahead and add two more paths for those two bottom holes. You can also use the path selection tool to adjust the size and position as well. Now these three circular paths, we want to knock these out of the first path we drew. So with all of them selected, go to the drop down at the top and select subtract front shape. Now hover over the work path and hold command or control and click to make a selection from that path. And you can also save a work path by double clicking it and giving it a name, which is very useful if you'd like to have lots. Now we still have our selection made. So from the bottom of the layers panel, let's add a layer mask and then give your layer either a suitable or highly inappropriate name. But yeah, fidget spinner works for me. And then we can right click and duplicate the selected layer. And let's change the destination to the other image. So we'll duplicate this into the desert picture. Now that's done, we can close this down and there we go. Next, use free transform to resize and reposition the fidget spinner. Let's make it a lot bigger. We'll adjust the angle as well and basically dump this somewhere in the desert. There we go, very nice. Now let's take a look at masking layers with brushes. So first let's right click the layer and select convert to smart object. And then from the bottom, we can add a layer mask. Now let's go over here and select the brush tool. Make sure that black is the foreground color and then click the drop down at the top. Now I'm using one of Photoshop's default brushes and I'm gonna bring that size down as well. Let's just crank that opacity up to 100% and then zoom in nice and close. And with the brush tool, just start to cut away the bottom of the fidget spinner. Now this is all rough, which lends itself quite nicely. However, there's also another way to do this and that is using the lasso tool. You can find it up here, so click and hold if you don't see it. And then again, doing this freehand, we can just cut a really wiggly waggly ziggly zaggly line and then bring it round to complete that selection. Now with the brush tool, we can brush away absolutely everything. So doing it this way is probably a little bit quicker. So let's do the same again for the other side. And there we go, we've cut away part of the object. And with the layer selected, we can now use free transform again and adjust the angle so it lines up with the desert. So let's pop this about here. Yeah, looks good. And something else that's good is the sponsor of this video, Invato Elements. An incredible platform for creatives like us that offers millions of assets with unlimited downloads, all with a commercial license. And they now offer a free seven day trial as well. So you can give it a go and see what you think. And the list of assets includes things like video, templates, music, sound effects, graphics, photos, fonts, add-ons, literally everything is included for just $16.50 a month with an annual subscription. And you can check out the link below. Right, let's move on to changing an object's color. So click this icon from the bottom of the layers panel and select solid color. So I'm gonna pick a custom color now. We'll go with a blue color. And then I can hold alt or option and click between the two layers to add a clipping mask. This clips this to the layer below. And then from the blending modes drop down, I can select color. Now let's take a look at adjusting the exposure. So from the bottom, we're going to click the adjustment icon, but first we're gonna select hue and saturation. Bring the saturation all the way to the left, removing the color. And now we can add an exposure adjustment layer. Adjust the top and bottom sliders, as you can see here, to make the image darker. And again, we'll set this as a clipping mask so it only affects the layers below. Once that's done, we can balance the exposure between the fidget spinner and the desert. And we can do this without worrying about any of the colors. Hence that step, adding the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Pretty nifty, right? And now it's time to look at balancing the colors. So first let's add a color balance adjustment layer. And as with the others, add a clipping mask. From this panel, we can adjust the colors of the shadows, midtones, and highlights. And the goal here is to balance the colors of the fidget spinner and the desert so that they look like they're existing in the same space. For example, the desert image is quite warm. So we're going to introduce some of that warmth into the fidget spinner as well. Okay, now let's move on to adding object shadows. 
So because I'm a bit lazy, I'm going to select that exposure adjustment layer and simply duplicate it and then invert the mask and then add a clipping mask. Now, if I select the layer itself, I'm going to move the sliders in the opposite direction even more. And this is going to make that adjustment even darker. And now with the layer mask selected and white as the foreground color, I'm going to use the brush tool to brush in some shadows. And the best way to do this is to imagine that this is a real fidget spinner that has landed somewhere in a desert. Where is the light source coming from and where is it going to cast the shadows? And if you're new to this, well, it's definitely something that takes practice, so don't get discouraged at first. Right, something similar, let's take a look at adding surface shadows. Right, let's select our background layer and add another exposure adjustment layer. Again, add a clipping mask and move these sliders in the opposite direction to make the image darker. Again, select the mask and invert it to hide that effect. And now from the brush tool drop down, we can actually squish that brush shape to make it more elliptical. And something else you can also do is use the left and right arrow keys to rotate the brush. So let's rotate this round so it matches the angle of the fidget spinner and just check. Now it's probably a bit too thick. Let's just thin that down even more. There there we go. And now we can brush in some shadows on the surface of the desert being cast by the fidget spinner. Now I'm just doing this very quickly, but it's definitely worth taking your time with this. And once you've got your shadows in place, you can go back to that adjustment layer and make some changes so you can make them darker or lighter as required. And if you'd like to move them, resize them or whatever, you can select the layer mask and use free transform as you would any other layer in Photoshop. So you can see I've squished it down even more and adjusted the position ever so slightly. There we go. That's looking uh, not totally shit. Hooray. And using this elliptical brush I'm also going to brush into the bottom of the mask on the fidget spinner just to make it a bit more jaggedy raggedy and roughen up those edges. Now look I'll be honest this this wasn't the best brush to use but I was being a little bit lazy so that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. And there we go let's just finish roughening up that edge I mean ugh, it, it, just guys honestly just use a more suitable brush please. Right, next let's move on to adding some highlights. Okay, first let's select the layer where we added our shadows and then add another exposure adjustment layer. We'll move the sliders in the opposite direction this time. Again, select and invert the mask, grab the brush tool. We'll grab a normal one this time, none of that elliptical nonsense. And again, using white, we're just going to brush into that mask and create some highlights. And again, remember to consider your light source. Now let's play around with some environmental lighting. So let's add a solid color adjustment layer. And for the color, I'm going to pick something orangey that kind of matches the desert. You can try out a bunch of blending modes, but I'm going to use multiply. And again, I'm going to add a clipping mask. Select the layer, invert it. And again, with the brush tool and white, I'm going to brush in some orangey areas around the bottom of the fidget spinner. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want that warmth and that color from the desert to be applied to that bottom part of the fidget spinner. Right, next we're going to look at adding textures. So let's open up this image from the project files, which kind of looks like stained tea or coffee on paper. And let's copy and paste this into our main document. We can then use free transform to resize this and reposition it so that it covers the entirety of the fidget spinner. Now I definitely encourage you to play around with the blending modes, but in this example, I'm going to go with overlay. Let's also add a clipping mask, give the layer a name and then adjust the opacity depending on whether you'd like the effect to be more or less pronounced. And next we can move on to adding atmosphere. And this technique is great for adding fog or mist. And we'll start by duplicating that orange solid color adjustment layer. Let's also delete the associated mask, bring the opacity to 100% and set the blending mode to normal. Now hold alt or option and click on the layer mask icon to add a new layer mask and set the brush tools opacity to 100% and the flow to somewhere between two and 5%. Make sure your fill color is set to white and with a nice big brush, brush over your entire scene to add this foggy atmosphere. And if you'd like a denser, more atmospheric fog just repeatedly brush over that area and if it's all a bit too much of course you can adjust the opacity now let's add a curves adjustment layer on top of everything and we can use this to introduce a bit more contrast oh, very nice very nice we can also switch from the rgb channel to red green and blue and adjust these as well and of course with curves you can go completely wild like this uh maybe don't do that but yeah, something like this is uh, is looking pretty good, I think. And remember, you can also change the color of the atmosphere just by clicking on that solid color fill layer. And I'm now going to just work on those highlights a little bit more. In fact, this entire process often does involve a lot of back and forth, tweaking things, tidying things up, etc. Speaking of which, I'm going to take a second just to tidy up a few things and make a few adjustments before we move on to the last tip. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Now, one thing I love to do is turn all of these adjustment layers off and then turn them back on one by one, just so we can see how far we've come. And if we do need to make any tweaks, this is a good way to isolate those effects and work on them individually. And I just realized that we haven't actually saved this file yet, so we should probably do that now, just in case anything goes wrong. Cool, that was lucky, Dan. Playing a risky game there, son. Right, let's move on to the last tip, particle brushes. So let's kick this off by adding a solid color adjustment layer. 
And let's go and change the color to a dark brown, orangey, sandy kind of color. Yep, that works. So now let's show this layer again, select the mask and invert this to hide everything. And then it's time to select the brush tool and go up to the drop down at the top. And if I scroll down, you can see I have tons of custom brushes here. And I'm gonna pick this sand dust brush here and I get most of my brushes from Envato Elements. And here you can see me using that brush to brush in some sand exploding off the surface of the desert. And exploding may be a bit dramatic, but I wanted to give the sense that this fidget spinner has just crashed into the desert and these sand particles are intended to represent that impact. And if you do spend a bit longer on your design and get through copious amounts of coffee, well, you can end up with something that looks like this.